Another thing that, that comes up often, we see people, well, solvers are so fast, computers are so fast, that uh, the real gist is to build these, you just build these huge models, but uh, uh, <laughs> there's a downside to it. Um, you can get big models that take longer to run, and also you can still have pathologies within bigger models just looking through smaller models. Um, what you really want is better elements. When people say, okay, I'm going to mesh it with a lot of elements, and invariably I'm going to have a better stress result. Well, not really. Maybe. I mean, it's one of those Gaussian distribution things, you know. On average, you could say that. But if you're not checking the quality of your mesh, you're not getting anything for your money. You're not getting anywhere without by just over meshing it if you're not checking the quality. And so these are one of, this is what I would call my short list model checkout. Always, always run the Jacobian. And there's another little thing too is I'm going to make a new, I'm going to bring in a chunk of junk. Where, oh yeah, there it was. Even if you can solve, like this. And the default is just to go down through solids, like that. I'm not going to use mid sites because I want to just, I'm ready gun. You guys are watching, this is boring. Um, You know, it meshes, and when I say check the Jacobian, I'm always coming under, well, I want to make sure you got it. I'm using this item here, model data contour. If you guys have attended RM the seminars, you know about it. We always just come down and pick the Jacobian. And, of course, you can have values above 0.9. Basically, anything about 0.9 is a dead element. Uh, it's so twisted and so, and so beat up that it acts as a rigid element. It can lock up your matrix. It can also pour, numerically ill-condition your matrix also. In other words, you can get such skewed values in the matrix that it tends to sort of have collateral damage around it. Um, Nastran won't run typically with elements above a 0.9 in Jacobian. So... I'm going to do a control Z to undo, control Z again, control Z again. I'm just hitting the control Z undo. And this is one of the things, that, it's been out for a while, geometry preparation. Prepare geometry. What this does is, is it cuts, gets rid of small edges, combines small surfaces together in one clean surface. We have talked about this before. We've done another seminar on setting it up. And... It doesn't delete anything, it doesn't pave, it just improves what's there. And I'll give you a visual feedback on it. And the visual feedback is it shows you where it combines surfaces, like that. And then we can go straight into solids. Same drill, voila. So when we're doing solid meshing, we'll check the Jacobian if the part's particularly complex. We're going to use the geometry preparation. But we're doing it with, with an intent. Our intent is, is to get better quality elements. Back to the Jacobian. And now we're down to 0.819. Okay. And if you want to see more on this, Voila, another seminar, FEMAP and NASRAN update. Okay. This is something new. This is via 11.1. .1. And what this refers to is that there's a new mesher that's built into it. And it takes your surface mesh envelope. And this is the way all meshing works work out there. <laughs> is it, uh, it paves all the surfaces with triangular elements, just, just flats just plates. They're actually in PMAP, they're plot only. They're just triangular plates. It paves all the surfaces over, meshes all the surfaces, checks it, see that it's sealed up, makes a sealed volume. Then it meshes all these facets from the outside to the inside. And the old mesher 
well, the current measure, is that oftentimes you get bridging. You only get one element through the thickness. On the new measure within V11, this one, you it will actually give you an option multiple tet through thickness. And the way it works is that it looks along your wall and say, oh, look, we have two elements through the thickness on the wall, and it will force that through that thin structure to ensure you got two elements. And if you have a lot of bending in your structure, you're going to get a bit better, you're going to get, you know, better stresses if, if there's a ton of bending. And one of those things, this is not a hard and fast rule. A lot of times on thin plates, in, in many low cases, you're not going to have a lot of bending. And even if you have mild bending, it's amazing how well one element goes through the thickness. So it's not dogma. It's like, thou shalt only have, you know, two elements on thin. No, it doesn't work like that. It's mechanics. Uh, sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. But uh, if you need it, there it is. And uh, I've been told that the V11.1 is, is going to go to the foundry tomorrow and be available for download next week. Now, you guys are going to have to update your licenses because right now we're on V11.0.1. So since we're going up a whole solid point, you're going to have to update your licenses. And so if you have questions on that, email us, and we'll hook you up with the right place to go. Okay. Having very clean geometry. If you're doing plate modeling, it really helps. Uh, I, I'm very, I'm somewhat fanatical about setting up my my plate meshing. Um, and what am I referring to? Clean skin. So we start out with with this set of geometry. And we have all these individual surfaces, and we can blank them. And you can use the tree. You, you guys have seen. We've had another seminar on how to use the tree, getting started, right-click, show all. And we've done several seminars on surface uh, manipulation, surface meshing, because it's such an important theme. And I'm holding the, this, I'm pushing the shift key down, holding the left mouse button, and selecting all. And if you want to see the selector, I can hit this little selector button. If I want to turn it off, I hit it again, hit OK. And if I stitch it up, it tells you where you have the free free edges, and we have a free edge between this part, and and on the tree here. Well, I'll, I'll double click on the screen. Uh, we now we're down to two solids, and this has been historically the what you had to live with. Well, about two years ago, you have non-manifold add, and now you can pick the two solids, and it'll stitch them together. It'll make that a continuous, there's only one curve there. There's not two curves. So for meshing, that is pretty sweet. And now, what I want to do is go to the next page. Show something in V11 that was that was very nice. It's the non-manifold ad has, if you got perfect meetup, perfect junctures, it works quite well. But the reality of <laughs> You guys have been there. You get things. This is just a bit exaggeration, but you get geometry that doesn't meet up. That's just a chunk of junk. So in V11.1, you can go to the geometry surface, non-manifold add, and the tolerance here really, really works. Watch this. I'm going to set it to 0.1. Voila. Stitches it up. That, I thought, that was pretty amazing. So, And what I call this is, I know best practices. I'm, I don't want to get into, say, like marketing, marketing. How do you, how do you really, you know, what are best practices? Well, you need to know what's going on. I mean, you need to know what is happening on the software front, that you can take advantage of it and build better models, build more accurate models. And so this is part of it. It is, it's, it's, uh, I remember the old days, I, I, I'm a member of ASME, and uh, the, you go to the meetings, and uh, I haven't been to a meeting in a long time, but I feel sort of guilty because, you know, that's part of professional development is you staying, staying into your field and staying abreast of it. So, 
This one is under, I'm calling this stress, stress visualization and validation. And although it's a perfect quad, best practices, attention to detail. If your model looks good, if it has that smooth, clean look, it's going to instill more confidence in people. Um, yeah, it sounds a bit silly. You think, well, why does it matter? You know, I, um, I just got to build it. I just got to get get done. Um, well, you learn a lot by inspection of the model. You find things. Um, I, I there's a comment in the automotive industry. They they ship their meshing offshore and. and they ship a, the geometry offshore, it comes back all clean, all mashed up, and they call that body in white. Um, and then the analysts uh, onshore do all the details of putting things together. And um, I, mean, I, I can understand that for very routine stuff that where you're, where you're doing, it's like if I have to do another car body, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to puke. Um, I, can, I can see that. But... For most of us, I think we're doing different parts, doing different structures. It really helps to get into it, and it really helps to, to understand where things are going and how things are put together. So I'm a, I'm a real fan of still doing my own meshing. And the meshing toolbox, I, I live a lot in it on services. So my sequence is once I get something that looks clean, I'll stitch it into manifold, I'll stitch it into a coherent body, and then I'll start working on it, and then I'll stitch it in a manifold, and then when I mesh it, then I'm into the meshing toolbox, and I'm cleaning things up. Like these little small edges like that. And here we have a surface split, so now what I'm going to do is combine boundary surface, like that. And then you can walk through this and this is something I've done a seminar I think I've done the three seminars on, on this and it's all there and where you want where you're going with it is something like this the perfect quad your, your maximum Jacobian maybe is eh, 0.3 that that is clean and one of the things with something like this you know the stresses are just going to flow that it's just going to look beautiful and we have more information. We've got service modeling. And also, I did this article for desktop engineering, stress visualization and validation. And um, go on to web page, white papers. And if you want to torture a new engineer, ask them where stresses are calculated and how, how they're calculated, if they're calculated nodes, or they're calculated at centroids, and things like that, and, and how stresses are contoured, and judging bad, good shape, things like that. So, <laughs> and you too can be an FEA superhero. So, and this is, again, all this stuff is at our website. Okay, I'm at 25 minutes, about, I think I'm, I'm on schedule here.